this is it. The finale of season five for the Vetro Touring Car Championship. Morton starts on pole position. He needs to win to be champion. It's a good start by Morton as well. Aboard the X, Nigel Mansell, Ford Mondeo. A good start as well by Corley. Corley needs to be third of above and he'll take the crown. But with the long run into the first corner, into the hairpin, it's second place for Corley so far, rubbing for third place in the background, Adams in the X, Jan Lammers, Volvo goes off, heading through the first weaving few corners, he's in the background and Alfa Romeo goes off, and that's Dorman, Dorman aboard the 1994, Alfa Romeo 155, only has to finish the race to win the Class B title, they're going to have to talk to the stewards about that, that was very contentious stuff on this opening lap. Mark up into third place though, a great start in the ex Giampiano Simoni, 1995, Alfa Romeo, a few punts for the lead, a few punts for third and for fourth place, out of nowhere, here comes Mar, fourth place, a good start from that BMW, but Morton leads the race, just holds out, ahead of the Peugeot, the Peugeot Corley into second place, third place was a good start, although going over the grass there, not a good move there, from Riley into third place, side by side again for the race lead, touching right around the outside, the Peugeot tries to go for the lead, can't make it over, so as they head over the line for the first time, Morton leads this race, second place for Corley, third for Riley, here's a replay, this is a board for Roan in the exit. Will Hoyter, it's right up the inside, comes Adams out of absolutely nowhere into the tyre barrier, not a great start from that car, this is Boys in the 3 Series, Boys getting very close for Vaglia's old machine, there's a few drivers ahead of us, a big moment there, and oh, there's contact, a couple of pieces of contact, and right around goes the Afro Romeo, they didn't sound like there was any lift off at all, the brakes don't even seem to be coming on at all for that BMW, that will definitely have to be reviewed by the stewards, but meanwhile we get back to the racing action, defending once again very hard, Morton running a bit wide, Ma had a moment, he's off his contact with the Alfa Romeo behind, but Morton and Corley, your two race leaders, Riley in third place, it's a Peugeot 2-3, Ford in the lead, into the S's once again, synchronised sliding there from the 2 4 a 6s very tricky stuff, it's a difficult circuit at the best of times to really manoeuvre your cars around, side by side, into the second of the hairpins, darker green and well he's certainly gone off and forced out wide is Corley down to third place that would still be enough for him to take the championship but not the manner you would hope for the racing to be when it stays close a little bit wide there's plenty of time in this race to try and defend though side by side Clark is attacking with Ma Ma defending vigorously on the inside of the corner running a little deep struggling with the front end of that car and the Alfa Romeo getting a good sign, but look at this, the Class B leaders in this race, right up against the Class A drivers, that's how quick these Class B cars are around here, so, third place car, that is of our champion, Alec van der Nauw, Corley, right over the grass, had a real moment, nearly lost it then, that could prove calamitous. Proof of the Class B order, Barone leading this race ahead of Reed. Wolfenden in third, ahead of Stern and Adams and Stern getting a bit of a moment he's attacking in the old Rob Gravitt for Sierra into third place Wolfington down Adams is challenging in the Exxon Lammers Volvo A50 as well through to the hairpins having a bit of a swipe aboard the number 15 machine a great sight here a few cars from the different eras right from the early eras of the super touring categories is for class B over the very quick left handed the last few corners and it's going wide over the grass a few drivers struggling at that corner it's such a quick corner you get a bit of understeer and it's a real challenge for the drivers to recoup that speed over the big curb at the final corner onto the extremely long run over the start finish line and well it's Wolfen who's coming into the pit lane aboard the E36 3 Series coming in for his stop Morton still leads this race, second place for Riley, Riley still being challenged, tooth and nail by Corley, into the S's once more, right over the grass go a few of the drivers, Morton's defending with his life, a bit of an attack, it's Mondeo versus Peugeot, Peugeot into second place and into third place, Corley's caught up despite his moments a few laps ago, 
right around the outside into the second hairpin couldn't make it work Riley goes wide nearly pushes out Corley Corley though is sitting high in the championship lead second place would confirm him as champion if it was to finish like this on board the back of Morton though right for Riley who gets a very wide very wide exit out of that corner and Biff there goes Corley, and that wasn't very friendly. He's trying to take the race lead, but that's cost him a position. Riley manages to weave his way back through into second place. Fantastic racing for the top three over the grass, down the long back straight. They're almost three abreast as they make their way into the first corner. Morton defends vigorously, a puff of smoke on the front of those tyres. They're screaming, they can't take much more of this close action. One tap from Riley into second place, tries to go to driver's right hand side, can't go around the outside of these corners, it's a bit single file around this section, Morton got some great lines but bang, right up the outside, it was Corley going for the, the attack, Stern also in the mix in group B at the moment in class B, with the ex gravit Fortier was struggling under the brakes, a bit of a tap then on the back of Wolfenden, Wolfenden side by side maintains the position, he got the E30 BMW 3 Series as well. Right up alongside Adams in the X Volvo of Jan Lammers. They're getting lapped by a few of the Class A runners, but Ma, along with his teammate for this weekend, going very wide. He's struggling, he's struggling for grip. He just can't get the car to bite. The two BMWs almost make contact into the final corner. And as they make their way, a few drivers, including a very late call from Morton, into the pit lane. That was extremely late. The stewards might want to review that. But a daring call from Morton to take the impetus to come into the pit lane. Clark aboard the 1995 Alfa Romeo. Got the 1994 Alfa Romeo ahead. The Class B and Class A very well matched around this VAR circuit. Clark could be coming into the pit. He's not going to on this lap, though, trying to make the move on his compatriot but however a few drivers coming out of the pit lane and wow they're sitting right in the middle of the field almost onto the grass that was tricky stuff for the drivers to negotiate that could have ended in disaster but Clark is just behind the original race leader of Callum Morton now Reed in the X McNeil BMW 3 Series the E30 very chrome and black car coming through the final few corners of this lap there's about a sector to go but Reed is leading class B at the moment ahead of Beku Wolfenden still in third ahead of Stern with Adams in fifth place just a summary of your class B order as it stands and Wolfenden third in class B well I was in class A for a little while aboard the former 92 Vickley racing machine heading into the final two corners two very tight right handers so from such a tricky tight section after such a flowing fast section of this circuit into the pit lane right Reed is into the pit lane so the race leader in class B into make his pit stop the class A car just leaving that's one of the 95 BMWs that's Walker heading back out of the circuit right into the middle my goodness me Clark almost rolls he almost digs in as he has to rejoin into the circuit rejoins right in the middle of the circuit Clark did fantastically to avoid that could have ended in disaster but Morton goes back to his defensive effort Morton still ahead of Riley Corley in third Marvin Walker fourth and fifth Walker might not be in fifth for long if the stewards have to review that footage but Morton sitting right on the apex of Mondeo the former Nigel Mansell car defending fantastically around the VIR circuit and as they make their way through the penultimate few corners through the left up towards the right running over the grass it's a line a few drivers are taking could end in disaster if you're not careful but these drivers are so talented as they make their way through. Ma makes a bit of a mistake though, my goodness me, he tank slaps, he's almost onto his two wheels and Ma into the barriers. What was I saying about praising the drivers? Well, that was poor driving from Ma there. Should probably stick to something else to be honest. But as he makes his way back onto the circuit, can't find the time to get back on, but we've been struggling with the brakes all weekend long. Well, that was a real grip issue for Ma. 
Morton still leads. Second place, so Corley back into second place, battling well with Riley under the brakes. Makes the move into the S's. A few taps from Riley. Riley and Corley are very aggressive with each other over this last race. Corley may be feeling the pressure for the championship challenge. Cuts right across the nose. Morton leads. Corley in second place, he's challenging Morton once again, he doesn't just want to win the championship, he wants to win the final race of season 5, the Retro Touring Car Championship, going down to the wire, the Forza Racing Series Championship, great racing from all involved at the moment, and he's right round the outside of driver, his left hand side uses superior traction, superior grip, and Corley leads this race through the final corner, what a great move there by our champion Alex on board with Riley side by side with our two championship protagonists Corley on the left, Morton on the right, Morton's got the inside line into the first corner, a bit of a lock up, a bit of a puff of smoke and the Ford Mondeo, the ex Mansell car is back into the lead of this race, has to hold off Corley, Corley loses traction and oh that's Clark, that's the number five of Clark in class A, there's a lot of damage to that vehicle, what's happened there? There's a lot of damage aboard that vehicle. We go on board with Barone. And oh, that's a big roll. Giampieri Simone up and over goes Giampieri Simone. He did that in the Class A car. He should have done that in the 1994 Tarquini car. Memories are not killed and just digs into the grass. Up and over, up and over, right onto the apex. Wow, I'll certainly give that an eight for his performance in the air there, but a scary moment on board with Clark and bang, 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 windscreen smashes and well, Clark, an unfortunate accident for Clark, but that is him out of the race. The safety car comes out, that bunches the field up again. Class A, Morton, Riley, Corley, Marr, Walker, that's the top five through the final corner as the safety car comes back in. This has tightened everything up. Corley's gonna be feeling the pressure now. He could lose it if everyone else gets a great run. Morton leads, second place is Levi Riley on board with Dorman, your champion. If he finishes his race, of course, he only has to finish to win the Class B title, the Will Hoy Memorial Trophy, and goes to a very appropriate driver, been fighting in Will's spirit all season. The top three nose to tail in Class A. Morton, Riley, Corley. That's the order. The top three. The two BMWs lacking a little in performance. But Corley goes straight on down the S's. He almost collides with Riley. Riley's got the impetus and he's run out. He's run out by Morton. Corley leads his race after all of that. It's second place for Morton. And now Jenkins in the 1995 Vauxhall Cavalier. The Cleland car struggling. Jenkins not having the greatest of seasons aboard that 95 machine. Catches the grass and bang into the tyre wall. A poor moment there for Jenkins. A shame for him. But in Class B, it's Beku leading this race. Barone in second ahead of Reed. Right Reed in third. Adams fourth and Dorman in fifth. But fifth would be enough. Not too long to go for the rest of this race but the 1994 car the ex Jan Lammers car the Volvo 850 of the estate the ever popular car is heading over the line now to start another lap but Jenkins into the pit lane the warnings go off the Vauxhall team ready to prepare that car like another Vauxhall please that one's had it but side by side second and third is the battle for Class A. There's a Class B runner in all of this as well. Got some great pace, great pace all race long. And Corley now into the lead of this race has managed to get ahead of Morton. Can Morton retain second place? He can just about. Riley in third has been with them all of this way, but can he hold on for the rest of this race? Corley will lead this race. Morton defending hard for second place. Riley getting very close, a little bit of contact. Second and third. The Peugeot, though, doesn't look settled for first. Right up the inside goes the Fort Mondeo. The first place, second place, they both go wide. Riley takes advantage of this and right round the outside of the left-hander. Takes the race lead. Corley does respond. He nudges him a little at the apex and manages to keep it through. Dorman, the 94 Alfa Romeo in Class B, fighting with Adams. 
and closing up. A few more nudges there for the Class A race lead. This is getting tight at the very top of this race. Over the line once more. Peugeot 1, Peugeot 2. But which of the Peugeots is it going to be? But it's three wide. Oh my goodness me, they all touch. Three wide heading into the first corner. This is very tight stuff. The Mondeo, out of nowhere, has come back into the race lead. Very, very tight. A few drivers going wide. And going wide indeed is Levi Riley. Levi loses out one position, two positions. And Corley slows down. Corley slows down. He must have felt... He was at fault for that and lets the position go back through. But Walker up into second place. So Morton leads this race. Corley has to finish in fourth, else he won't be champion. Ma, not too far behind. So he's in danger of potentially losing out to this crown right at the very end of this race. Morton making their way through the traffic. Jenkins right out of this race. Had his moment a while ago. And has lost it going in the fast corner. Bang! A big hit into the barrier for Jenkins. He is certainly not having the best of days today. And that is only going to make his mood even worse. A shame there. But the race continues. But as we get back into this race. Walker goes wide now. Walker goes wide. Was running high up in this race. And that means Corley has gone back through. Corley challenging for the race lead. But Walker with a big moment being back challenged by the Class B runners in all of this. Class B could win this race overall, but they're not going to have much chance left. There's just a few corners to go, and it's going to be a Class A win, but it's a Class A champion of John Corley. That's a champion in Class A. Your champion in Class B, the Will Hoy Memorial Trophy, goes to Dorman aboard the 1994 Alfa Romeo 155. And Jenkins, well, he's not going to be winning anything. He's at the very end of the barriers there. A shame, a shame to end his season like that. But coming into the pit lane and just mid-judged it, bang, into the pit lane. 